Good day folks, this is Greg Judy, Green Pastures Farm. Everybody, welcome to our channel. And today's topic is uh, soil fertility, how to turn broken land into productive land without breaking the bank. And uh, you can spend a ton of money out here on land, putting down a lot of stuff. And uh, this is a, a lease farm. We've had this one now, I guess, close to 17 years. Um, Anyway, we, we couldn't really do much with it because we just had a year-to-year -year lease on it, which I don't like doing. But the landowner was not comfortable signing a multi-year lease. And uh, anyway, he, he passed away. And um, anyway, his, his daughter inherited it. And she just said, Greg, you've got it. I'm not selling it. It's the only thing I've got left of my dad. And uh, he would just be so happy to see you running cows on this because... He looked forward to us bringing the cows over here. But folks, this was a poor, poor ridge. It's still got the dead furrows in it up on top. This was plowed. They cropped this back in the early 1900s. This was all cropped. And uh, they used to raise corn and beans, milo, uh, you know, whatever. They'd, they'd put it out. They'd run the mules. And the old timers told me they'd start up there at the top of the hill and they would plow down the hills with the mules open the dead furrow up can you imagine what that did when we got a three inch like last night we got a three and a half inch rain so all of our topsoil is down the gulf of mexico now we you know but we're building it back but anyway i took soil tests on this several years ago and it was 4.8 some of the ridges up to five no clover absolutely zero you couldn't grow a clover plant on here and it was broom sedge a lot of broom sedge and uh, cedars, cedar trees. I don't see the cedars in here like they were. Cedars like acidic soil. So what I did, the soil test called for 285 pounds of, of uh, phosphorus. Uh, it was uh, 210 pounds of potash. And like, oh, I forgot the nitrogen. It's crazy the number on the nitrogen. 150 pounds, I think, or something like that. Well, I didn't put down any nitrogen. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try something. So we just did a test here. I put down 80 pounds of phosphorus. And I put down, it was 60 pounds of potash. And so I was, and you couldn't get it without any nitrogen. It had, I don't know, 5 pounds of nitrogen in it or something. That's what we put down per acre. Well, then we unrolled hay in here. Uh, it was two winters in a row. And this is where the sheep went through the winter in 2018 uh, the sheep were in here for a month on what you're looking at here okay the snow was 20 inches deep and the sheep were digging through the snow drifts out here and the clover came the clover came and i'm telling you it not only did it come it is super super average out here it's, it's everywhere it's not just a clump here or a clump there it's very, very, very good diversity. It's just mixed everywhere you walk. Folks, this is where the bulls are coming next. That's a full paddock out there, okay? 76 bulls are going to be on that for one day. And they're going to be up to their bellies in grass. Uh, the really shocker was the other side of the ridge right here. This is the ridge that faced east. I want to show you all something. So this is an east-facing ridge I'm headed toward up here. Gosh, this is just pure joy. Starting with broom sedge and going to this. Man. So look at this. This is the east side of the ridge. This was the poorest ridge on Judy Farms. I can remember bringing cows on to this ridge up here on top and we'd leave them in here for a day give them the whole ridge because there wasn't enough feed in here to feed them any more than for 12 hours and those cows would never crest over that hill and go down toward this woods all the way down this valley right here they never grazed well if you're looking that way it'd be everything on the left hand side there wasn't anything in there it was broom sedge, cedars, and green moss. 
So just by putting down that phosphorus and a little bit of potash, it stimulated the soil. And we did put down two tons of lime. And it took two years. It took two years. This is the first year we've seen these kind of results. Didn't see much the first year because it was a drought. But now we've had the rains. We've had the animal impact. We've had the sheep on it. We've had the cattle on it. <clears throat> it's had a couple winters of putting hay on it. Look at this. Folks, it didn't cost me a fortune to do this. We're talking, you know, 35, 40 bucks an acre. Well, yeah, that's still quite a bit of money on 100. That's $4,000. But, you know, when you can when you can raise the kind of beef that we're raising on an acre, that's no money. That's cheap. You start factoring in buying land today. Well, Missouri, this kind of land today is selling for $3,500 to $4,000 an acre in our area. And you can increase the productivity 400% by putting in 35, 40 bucks. That's money well spent. But here's the deal. See, once you get it going, it's not a consumptive thing. In other words, you don't have to come back and do it anymore if you're not overgrazing it. So the bull's only going to be on here for 12 hours, or I'm sorry, 24 hours, but we're giving them huge paddocks. Okay? So they're going to leave a lot behind. So all this clover is going to have a chance to go to seed. Okay? We're going to make sure of that on the second rotation or third. We're going to make sure we have plenty of recovery. Uh, there's lots of Queen Anne's lace in here. Oh, man, they're going to eat that. It's like wild carrot. So once you get the carbon growing, don't overgraze it. You shouldn't ever have to put fertilizer down again. But this farm was broke. It was broke. It, there's some farms, I've heard people talk about up in North Missouri, it, it's been farmed for so long that it won't even grow weeds anymore. And that's because of bad farming practices. Well, this one was plowed downhill. And the reason they play, pre, plowed it downhill with mules, it was easier on the mules. Because when they got to the bottom of that hill down there, they'd raise the plow up out of the ground and the mules would walk back up the hill and they would plow down the hill again. And they always said their land went sour. So they'd get a little bit of corn crop the first year, and the second year they'd get one the length of my little finger, a corn. And they said, well, the ground just went sour. And I'm like, nope, it didn't go sour. It went south. It all ended up down the Mississippi Delta. So we didn't want our soil, so we gave it to them. But folks, keep your land covered. We got three and a half inches of rain last night. We drove around the square here today. And there was some freshly worked soil. I mean, they went out there and they disc it. Disc or deep. And I'm telling you, the gullies and the soil that left those farms is just incomprehensible. You're not a farmer if you're mining your soil down the river. It just doesn't make sense. Keep your land covered. Bring ruminants onto it. Make a good living. And at the same time, you're building the future for your children. How many of y'all saw those advertisements for the farmer standing up there? And he's got his plaid jacket on or his shirt and Bill hat on. Yep, he said, I'm going to leave it better than I found it for my son. Well, that's a noble thing to say, but sorry to say, most of the farming practice, the, the commodity agriculture, if you drive through and look at what they're doing, I came home sick yesterday. Uh, a smelling roundup we drove from kansas city all the way back to columbia on the interstate 70 i bet you we saw 25 spray rigs and they're spraying this stinking ass roundup it, it's just killing everything and they plant our nation's food into that and uh yeah wonder why we've got some issues anyway i'm gonna get off of that <laughs> i'm sorry i got started on that one Woo! That's kind of depressing, but regenerative agriculture, folks, that's where it's at. Building soil, getting young people like Isaac and Ben back on the land. Those young men are having a blast. I'm having a blast working with them. And you know what? Our internship program has exploded with applicants. I wonder why. I wonder why. Yeah, if I was a young person, this is what I'd want to be doing. I wouldn't want to be sitting behind a computer screen the rest of my life. This is it. You're growing food. Making a good living. Working on your genetics. Working on your 
the diversity of your pastures. This is where it's at, folks. It's not in a 401k. It's not in a 401k. It's out here on the land, in the soil. You're only as wealthy as what your soil is. And any nation in history that has destroyed its soil has ceased to exist. Think about that one for a minute. All this stuff we're worried about, we need to be worried about our soil. Because you're only as wealthy as your soil. And that's because the food that goes into your temple, your body, your body, good food. It comes from soil that has microbes in it, fungi, worms, dragonflies. We saw our uh, bobolinks this morning coming through. Canadian geese, coyotes, you know, turkeys. We see turkeys out here just all the time. Deer. It's all about the whole. And in holistic management, they talk about the whole. You're not focusing on one thing. Everything complements one another. And so that's what I'm so excited about is making a home for a species. Because each one you make a home for on your farm, it supports eight additional ones. So folks, work on your landscapes. Check your soil fertility. Take a soil test. Get that pH up if you can above 6. And you're going to start seeing some of this. You're going to have animals so fat they can hardly walk. And I want to end with this. Everybody's talking about, oh, you got small animals and this and that. Folks, it's not profit per animal. It's profit per acre. So when you can run more animals on the same amount of land and get more beef, it's more beef production per acre, not more, an more weight per animal. Everybody, oh, get them big, get them big, get them big. Those folks are going out of business, folks. You don't want on that bandwagon. Get your cow size down to a thousand pounds and make a good living for you, your wife, your kids, and your community. This is Greg Judy. I'm going to sign off and we'll see everybody down the road. And folks, it's a great time to be in agriculture. Don't get down. Don't get down. Keep your chin up. This is going to be behind us. And we're going to see some of y'all at our grading school in September. Check out our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. Hope to see some of y'all there. And uh, we'll see y'all down the road.